All right, folks, this is SLP Reviews, and I'm actually going to review today. What am I reviewing today? I'm actually going to review today the um, Red, is it Red Table Talk with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett to see if I can see some nuggets, some understated body language um, that is happening between their conversation. And the reason that I'm doing this is, you know, over the weekend, Chris Rock um, had a Netflix special, good special, by the way, I watched it, in which he addressed the fact that um, Will Smith um, slapped him during the Oscars sometime last year. And I thought it would be interesting to actually review um, um, the discussion that Will Smith had with Jada Pinkett Smith um on i think she was seeing or cheating someone cheating on him or seeing someone else now i get that i think they have an open um an open marriage so she may not have been cheating on him nevertheless uh, i'm going to check it out and see if i can tell a difference um in the way they're communicating and i'm actually going to be reviewing a um I'm reviewing another review from the behavioral the behavioral arts, and what they did was they um, are looking at their body language analysts, and they reacted to this red table talk between Will and Jada Smith. Without further ado, let's get started. I really felt like we could be over. Yeah, yeah. no, and, we were over. And what happened? Yeah, and then I got into it. Okay, hold on. So, yeah, we were over. So I can tell. Hmm, let's like let's watch that again because Jada looks like she really meant that it would be over, and Will was like, uh, "We could be over." Definitely, Jada put a fine tune on it, a fine point on it. Let's see it again. I really felt like we could be over. Yeah, yeah, no, and, we were over. And what happened? So Will was saying that he, they could be over, and Jada made Jada made it definite that they were over. So that's that's definite distinction there. Let's go. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement. <laughs> an entanglement. Notice that pause and a slight smirk. She knows. The word she's using, entanglement, isn't. She knows it's just a euphemism, so I think that was kind of funny the way she said it. She was like, an entanglement, and that was a slight smirk, right there. Let's let's see it again. Let's see that slight smirk. An entanglement with August. That's what I said. You see that split? I see it. Do you see that split? That split smile. Let's watch it one more time. Uh, right before she says entanglement let's um yeah really felt like we could be over yeah know? no and, we were over and what happened yeah and then i got into an entanglement with august that's what i said yeah <laughs> you see it i see it i do see it let's go an entanglement yes <laughs> <laughs> okay he caught it too will smith caught caught it too entanglement that was pretty funny he's joking about it so i like that <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts, and this week we're going to talk about the most requested video that you guys asked me to analyze in the comments. This is the Red Table discussion between Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, and I think this is a really great way to wrap up this whole Will Smith thing, because we're seeing a lot of behaviors here, a lot of really interesting body mm. language, and a lot of things that explain what happened at the Oscars, a lot of correlation there. Really excited, let's dive right in. And at the end of the day, yeah. I don't like how all of this came to be. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So Jada is sitting down, her legs are folded. Will Smith looks pretty laid back as well. So both of these folks look pretty laid back right now, that's for sure. It's a situation that I consider private. You just feel like it ain't really nobody, nobody's, nobody's business. business yeah, but yeah. 
But now Black Twitter has claimed it <laughs> as their business. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. Yeah. Even though this is minuscule, I do feel like it's these kinds of things that create the world that we're in. I want to start with Jada's hand gestures. So I've said previously on the mm -hmm. channel that when fingers move, we see if they're going inwards or outwards. Inwards indicates stress because it's coming together. This is a sign of aggression, stress, anxiety. And when they relax, this is lower stress. But there's a point at which they go past that to what we call stop gestures. Notice how like when you're in the car with someone and they slam on the brakes, you might go <gasps> like this and all your fingers come out. Throughout this entire interview, this conversation, we see Jada doing a lot of this and she gestures like this. And the, this is even more stop gesture. It's like wax on, wax off. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Who remembers a Karate Kid? I remember the Karate Kid. Um, one of my childhood best friends. This was his favorite movie and he always used to do the crane um, kick. And it was his favorite thing. And this was definitely a classic. Karate Kid 1, 2, and I think 3. Anyway, moving on. Oh, oh, by, by the, the way, way, I do agree with, um, that's interesting what the body expert um, was talking about with, to me she looked relaxed for sure the way she was seated, but I definitely get and I'm, um, um, what that man was just saying in which fingers in, um, tense, fingers relaxed, but Jada was definitely doing a whole lot of this, and I mean, to her point, I mean, and her credit, obviously this is a very specific conversation that they're having, and at this point, a lot of people were giving him backlash um, for the entanglement that she and this other person had. There is uh, some folks, anyway, I don't want to repeat that, but mm, I don't know for sure about the guy that she was having the entanglement with, so I won't comment on that, but it was definitely um, a very, a very hectic, a very tense in, uh, moment for her, and she was in a hot seat, so I could definitely understand why she would be doing all of this, for sure. I think subconsciously, she, this is a response, this conversation is a response to a media leak. People were talking about it, so they decided to address it. But she doesn't want to be here, she doesn't want to talk about this, and we're seeing that in these gestures. Then she moves on. Okay, agreed. Okay, all right. So, so far we're on the same page. Yeah. So she's addressing this because it's a lot of, um, um, she's in a hot seat, like I said. She's in hot water with the media. Got it. To say that, you know, this is really minuscule. We're already seeing early signs of her distancing from the gravity here as to how big this is by calling it minuscule. We're just talking about it because, you know, it's, this is our reality. But that word minuscule is very telling of the distance, the psychological distance that she's trying to put between herself and this event. It's really not a big deal. On Will Smith's... Mm, okay, I hear what he's saying. So keep in mind, he may have watched this video before. I have not watched this video, so... Um, just, just because, because someone, someone says something, something once doesn't necessarily mean that you jump on it and you use it and you extrapolate into the future. So let's see if Jada continues to use those um, words that makes her that make her uh, whatever it is she did less lesser. So let's let's see let's see if that pans out. And we're seeing one of the most important themes of this whole conversation and in general, Will Smith's demeanor. And it's when they talk about how it's nobody's business and he goes, but Twitter has made it their business with that bit of a smirk, that bit of sass, and they both laugh. This is Will Smith diffusing tension mm -hmm. with humor. And this is what Will Smith does best. If you think about his career, think about his breakout roles, those earlier movies that he was in at the beginning of his career, we have things like Independence Day, Men in Black, Wild Wild West, and all those roles have one thing in common, and it's that he is the comic relief in a serious relationship. This is why mm. a lot of people were blown away 
by his anger and his swearing at the Oscars when he yelled at Chris Rock. Because this is very uncharacteristic of him, and I feel like a lot of people, that's where they clicked and went, oh, no, wait a second, this isn't a bit, because that's almost the opposite of Will Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, um, what body language expert is saying is, Will is uh, used a joke, and I, he's 100% right in the fact that I didn't even notice it, because Will Smith is a person who jokes all the time. So, let's see if the jokes continue, and I think what's going to be more interesting is, yes, he's joking about it, but does his body language add up to or equal to him being, ha ha ha, this is funny. So, is Will Smith going to continue joking about um, the incident during this interview, um, and is his body language and his body posture um, is it going to be consistent with a joke? Will his body show something different than the jokes that he's displaying? Let's see. Usually he's diffusing tension with humor. Okay, now let's look at their body language and see how comfortable they are in this conversation versus how stressed they are. And it's interesting for Will Smith. Mm. So initially, I could be wrong. Um, this guy is, is a body language analyst. So let's see if my initial take of they seem pretty relaxed ish right i'm not saying that they're the most relaxed in the world but they don't seem extremely tense right now well let's see because there's quite a bit on both sides so let's start with will so throughout the entire interview we see head tilting a lot and head tilting is mm. um comfortable but more importantly not threatened because when we tilt our head like this we're exposing our neck and this is very essential to our survival so when we do this we're usually in the presence of someone that we're comfortable with. If we look at his hands, they're down between his legs very often. We also see him rubbing the leg quite often. This is- Yeah, definitely rubbing the leg is a tail thing. Um, Telltale sign of, okay. Classifying self-soothing gesture. Mm -hmm. We do this when we're stressed. And also men tend to block their pelvic area when they're stressed as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like above the table, He's trying to keep it together. Mm. He's got that head tilt. He's in motion. He's cracking the jokes. But under the table, we're seeing that stress. When it comes to... Well, I mean, he's going to be nervous. He's on a talk. He's on his... He's sitting in front of his wife telling the world that she had a sexual encounter with another guy in the middle of Twitter and the entire social media making fun of him. He is going to be stressed, for sure. Yeah, this is a great lesson in how to gauge if someone is comfortable or stressed when they're sitting down. So here's a great sort of generalization I like to keep in mind. If you want to know how stressed someone is when they're sitting down, try to estimate how long it would take for them to get up and leave with all of their things. So this is something that I teach mm. in interviews and in interrogations. and. So what does that mean? If we have someone sitting down and all their belongings are close to them, they're holding onto their purse, they're holding onto their jacket, their feet are planted on the ground, they're sitting more at the front of the chair, um, maybe one of their hands is on their legs, on their knees, because we usually need that to get up, and it just looks like they could very easily get up and leave their exit checking, you know, their eyes keep going to the door. This is someone who's stressed and in their mind wants to leave this discussion. If we look at Jay That's a very good clue. Uh, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good advice. That is not someone who is ready to get up and leave. First of all, not only does she have her legs crossed, but they're crossed on top of the chair, like the way you would sit on the floor with your legs crossed. That is really difficult to get out of because first you have to uncross your legs, then you have to put them down on the ground, then you have to get up. She's also sitting pretty far back in the chair, so she's like sunk into the chair. So one of two things, either she actually is really comfortable and she, she you know, she's here, she's comfortable. She looks comfortable to me. Despite not wanting to talk about this, she's comfortable in this setting with Will or she's trying to fake comfort. She's like, I'm gonna sit like this because this really makes it clear that I'm comfortable and I'm okay talking about this. Let me know in the comments, which do you think it is? Is she actually comfortable 
Or is that something that she's trying to convey? Okay. All right. So as we continue to watch the video, I'll fi figure out um, and give my own opinion if she's really comfortable or not. Let's continue. Now we're going to look at some more specific exchanges and look at what their words and gestures tell us about what's really going on in their minds. But before we do, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavior analysis. It was about four and a half, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. That, that eye squinching, four and a half, four years ago. Mm, I don't. I don't believe that that was four years ago exactly. Now she could be. Maybe she just doesn't know how long ago. But I do think there's a bit of deception there with the timing of this, for sure. Let's look at it again. Or she's trying to fake comfort. She's like, I'm going to sit like this because this really makes it clear that I'm comfortable and I'm okay talking about this. Let me know in the comments, which do you think it is? Is she actually comfortable or is that something that she's trying to convey? Okay, now we're going to look at some more specific exchanges and look at what their words and gestures tell us about what's really going on in their minds. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavior analysis. It was about four and a half, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, started a friendship with August. Mm -hmm. And we friendship. actually became really, really good friends. <laughs> really, really good friends. Uh, I think it sounds like I'm being sold something. And I don't think, look at the way Will Smith is looking at her. That little smile, that little smirk. I don't think Will Smith is buying this either. But go ahead. And it all started. Let's see if the body language expert picks up on that. It was. And he's shaking his head suddenly. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Needing some help, you know. Me wanting to help his. Look at his uh, rocking back and forth. He's very uncomfortable right now. His uh, hands are clasped. And if you had the fact what the body expert said about putting your hands in between your pelvic. Um, oh, look at, look at Jada. Look at her hands and how it's on her knees, on both sides of her knees. It looks like she's holding on for dear life. Tension in her. I wonder what this muscle is called. Tension right here. Very tense moment. For Health both. is mental state because for me that was the thing when i when um when aug first came around he was he was really, really sick. sick he was okay i don't know if they've had a conversation before getting here but um it looks like they're trying to paint this person as a very sick mentally unstable individual so it kind of seems like a setup to paint this person as a mentally unstable individual moving on he's um, really sick yeah and yeah the outpouring for him she's holding her breath holding her breath in in, in attention in intention friendship with august mm -hmm. and we actually became really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. And it all started with him just needing some help. Mm -hmm. Lips first. You know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for know? me, that was the thing. When I, when, um, when Aug first came around, he was, he was really, really sick. sick. He's looking to her for, you no, know, yeah, that's a setup there. But, he was really, you know, really mm -hmm. sick, yeah. And... The mm, lips pursed. pouring for him from our family was uh, initially about his health. Yeah. So I said earlier that one of the main things that Jada's trying to do in this conversation is distancing, putting distance between herself and her actions. But another thing is justification. And here, right in the beginning, we hear her say, we actually became really, really good friends. Not friends, not good friends, not really good friends, really, really good friends. This might be the best friend I ever had in my entire life. And that is a justification to say this wasn't just anybody. You know, I didn't just, you know, fool around with anyone. This is someone that I was really, really good friends with. 
But as she says that, we see an eye block. So she closes her eyes, and this is a good amount of eye blocking as she says that, mm. and she starts her sentence with, we actually became really, really good friends. Now, actually, sincerely, honestly, to tell you the truth, these are all things we pay attention to in verbal analysis, and they're called perception qualifiers. They're these little words that we throw in to be perceived as more honest. Now, some people do this a lot as part of baseline, whether they're being honest or not. Some people say, honestly, a lot as they speak, it's a habit. Jada doesn't. She says, honestly, I think one other place in this whole conversation that I saw, maybe two or three more, but it's not a habit for her. So for her to start by saying, we actually became really, really I block close friends, I think they weren't actually that close. And she's just saying that here to say, it's fine. We were really close and that's why I did this. Then she goes on to say that. Mm, so the I block is something that we're learning new here too. So she did the I block and um, for me, what I saw is someone who was trying to convince other people of something. That's basically what I saw. I also saw a some kind of eye contact between Will and Jada in which it's like, okay, this is the time that we need to talk about August, um, this August individual and make him look like um, he was mentally unstable and that we were the ones who were helping him as if we were doing him a favor. She wanted to help him with his health and that's why she did this. Can someone explain that to me? They're talking, look, I don't know the details of this, but they're talking about Will Smith says really, really sick. And I don't know what they mean by six. If it's a mental or, or sort of emotional sick, fine. I get how maybe this could have helped him a little. But I feel like it's a little bit of a stretch for her to keep focusing on she was doing this for his health, mm -hmm. to help him with that. I, I, I'm not quite sure what she All means right, by that. Let's go on to the, yeah. Indefinite. If you're a homeowner in California, you won't have to pay your electric bill ever again. Let me explain. Sorry, guys. If you Definite. Yeah, I really felt like we could be over. Yeah, know? no, and we were over. That clip is... <laughs> she said, no, we were over. He was like, we could have been over. She was like, no, we were over. Actually very focused on Will and one line that he says that has so much depth to it, so many intents behind one sentence. And it's when he goes, I was done with your ass, I was done with you. That sentence actually has four psychological intentions behind it. The first one is, once again, diffusing the tension with humor. Again, we talked about how he does this, and this is a great example of that. Second, he is taking ownership of the breakup. He's saying, I was done with you. This was my decision. So this, we see this a lot in when couples break up to where someone goes, oh, who broke up? And they go, it was mutual. It wasn't mutual. You got dumped. So it's basically him taking ownership of that yeah. decision. Third, he's taking ownership of his own pain because he's going, I decided this, which led to you doing that, which hurt me, but it's my fault. I started with that. And finally, saving he is yeah. saving his wife that. from prosecution. So I by saying that. that, by sending a smile on his face, he explains something that happened at the Oscars that confused the entire world. And it's after he slapped Chris Rock, he was walking away with a smile on his face. And th this is still, by the way, mind blowing to me that I'm getting some comments of people going, oh, well, obviously this was staged because he's smiling as he's walking away. Like Will Smith can't hold back a smile. There's a lot of things in body language, like subconscious tells that are really hard to fake or really hard to hold back. A smile isn't one of them. Even an untrained actor can hold back a smile if they're trying to sell this moment of aggression. So that, as much as some people think, is an indication that it was staged, it's actually an indication that it really was not. Because if you pay attention, in this interview, every single time he throws out a line that is confrontational or aggressive, it is immediately followed with a joke, a laugh, or a smile. And it's that same smile from after the slap. Raised cheeks, tight lips. So it makes perfect sense that he'd be walking away from that with that smirk, because as I said earlier, this is what Will Smith does. He diffuses tension with humor. It's hard for him to not do that. Something really fascinating there at the end is the contrast and the confidence of their words. She's saying it was indefinite, mm. like that is so final. But he's saying, I really felt like we could be over. Mm, I felt saw that. could. 
That's not as high confidence as her. So he's going, you know, I'm, I'm not that sure. Like it felt like we agreed, could be over. Agreed. And she's going, oh no, we were definitely over. It, what I did was justified because we were definitely over. We're also seeing while he's saying, really felt like we could be over, two things. One, he says really through his teeth. His teeth are together, really felt. And that's not the first time he says something in this interview through the teeth. We're seeing that a few times throughout. And remember, anytime someone says something through their teeth, or you see tension in the jaw, this is anger. Because it's the way we evolved back when we weren't very evolved at all. When we saw a threat, we'd show our teeth as a way to tell it, look, I have these sharp things, I'm not afraid to use them. So that stayed with us so that when we're angry or when we feel threatened, we clench the jaw. We also see at the exact same moment, both hands are in fists like this. This is not a very common thing when we're talking to someone. Remember digital flexion? Hands together, teeth together. I really felt like we could be over. He's angry about this. And I, can't, I can never tell you if he's angry about the fact that it, it was over or it was going to be over or the fact that he's like, I really felt like it could be over, but it wasn't so final. So and there's anger around this. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement. Hmm. There's some eye shifting there. Well, let's see. I think, so, I mean, because this is your red table and you like brought yourself to the red table. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. As far as what? Hmm. Will is putting her in the hot seat right now. You and I decided we were going to take our space and what happened. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Let's talk about that. Yes, it was a relationship. Absolutely. Let's make something really clear. This is an entanglement. This is an entanglement. Maybe even this is an entanglement. I'm not judging. It's not my business what they do in their marriage. But let's less bad. The first time Will Smith asks the question, we see him look down as he says it. We see his body language sort of, you know, collapsing in a little bit as he asks, you know, what did you do, Jada? Almost like we ask a kid, what did you do? And it's like, what did you do? And his eyes are going down like he's not prepared for this answer. This answer hurts him. And despite that, we still see that smirk. That tight smirk, the same smirk he had when he was walking away from Chris Rock. And again, what a great example of how he throws this confrontational question and we see that smirk even when his confidence is um, collapsing. Then she says entanglement. And he asks again, you know, you know so, so let me ask this again. He makes it even clearer. And again, she uses entanglement. And at this point, he goes, entanglement. And we see that very clear and distinct moment where he eye blocks like this as he leans forward, like almost turning his ear a little bit. And we see one side of the mouth, the corner go up, which is contemptuous. So he's like, entanglement? Like, I'm not an idiot. What did you do? Give me the answer. Mm -hmm. So remember, eye blocking is like something we don't want to face. So we're seeing a bit of that eye blocking for a sec as he's sort of, and again, he's still smirking. Even if this is uncomfortable, even if it's confrontational, still that smirk. So, so it's astounding to me that anybody's still confused by that smirk after the slap. I feel like that husband, like I'm with you at the press conference. <laughs> and that husband, I'm with, now I got to be with you at the press conference. <laughs> while you like tell the world uh, about your transgressions <laughs> yeah he's joking about it but he it hurt him you see his eyes his face he, it looks weird his face looks weird right now right he's not happy to be the butt of everyone's joke like i love i love my baby i'm gonna stand by my baby no matter what <laughs> he's even making fun of it he does not want to be there saying that it's okay for you to be having entanglements with another person that's for sure but to his credit who would and the thing is to jada's credit i've been hearing for a long time i don't know how true it is that will smith and jada pinkett have an open marriage so it might not even be a big deal what she did but the fact that everyone is talking about it makes would make any man or any individual feel um bad 
This is once again more of Will Smith being Will Smith, diffusing with humor, but as he says press conference, we see his energy break away from this and turn towards where the cameras are. Because now he's thinking about his public reputation. Yes. And he doesn't do yes. that too many times in this interview, so it's very telling that now he's thinking about the world as he thinks about, okay, now we gotta go out in public to press conferences and I gotta just stand there while you talk about, you know, how you're gonna stand by me and try to explain your transgressions. And as he says transgressions, we're seeing a lot. First, we're seeing that contempt again, where we see one corner of the mm -hmm. mouth go up. And remember, contempt is the only universal emotion that is not symmetric, that we don't see the same thing on both sides of the face as we that lip go up mm -hmm. and he's saying transgressions and he's sort of spitting that out like that and we see face touching, one of the biggest signs of stress. So he's stressed about this idea of having to go out in public with her, more people trying to butt in, asking her questions about this, and him just standing there, not being Will Smith, but being Jada's husband. He decided to break all communication with me, right. which was totally understandable. Right. Um, and I let that be, and hadn't talked to him since. <laughs> Big justification, big distancing here, so Jay The best way to burn fat and get in shape. It's not keto, paleo, fasting, or vegan, and it's not super Sorry, intense. Guys. Jada's talking about how uh, August decided to cut all communication. Again, we're seeing these stop gestures, which is a real theme in this whole interrogation, but you know, he, he stopped talking to me, um, which is totally understandable. <laughs> I think you... <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> Just knowing somebody's riding what you know. Talking to me, because like, you know, he was done with me and we weren't really that close. He stopped talking to me and it's really, really understandable. I really get it. It's not that bad. It's normal for him to have not continued to talk to me. There's a real power in the just knowing somebody's riding with you no matter what. Yeah. And you really can't know that. Until you go through until through some stuff, you know. I don't want to go through this no more. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. either. Yeah, I'm gonna get you back first, and then you gonna get me back. I think you've gotten me back. <laughs> I think you. <laughs> I think we're good on that. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so is Will Smith insinuating that he'll get her back by getting being with other women? I think what. Jada is saying is, hey, I think you're good on that. I think you've been with plenty of other women. So that kind of goes to the fact, like I said, these guys most likely have an open marriage. Okay, that might, that's probably true. That's you know, true. but, um, and I don't think it's about getting anybody back. No, for me it is. Okay. Um, I'll give you that petty, <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> that is the clip for me where we are seeing their true self come out the most. So he starts off by saying, you know, there's real power to knowing that someone's going to ride with you. All right, so that's it. it. Um, yeah, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett seems like they have a, they actually seem like they have a very good relationship with each other. Um, maybe they see other people. Guess what? It's Hollywood. That's what folks do in Hollywood. They have unlimited options. Who are you and I to... Um, decide what they should or shouldn't do. Um, I liked watching this body language expert and I learned a few things like the eye blocking um, and some of the contempt where one half of the face changes and goes up versus the other half. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, click on the like button, do your thing, subscribe, whatever, and until next time, peace.